Hi everyone. It is May 31, 2018. I feel I need to do this. I need to read an awful lot of the Soviet art of brainwashing. So that you can understand what has happened in our country. Not so you can understand what may happen and therefore you can prevent it. It has happened. It has happened. We have been taken over. And unfortunately everything is going to get an awful lot worse. Why? Why has this happened? What the hell has happened to the American people? Well, a lot of what has happened is that for generations we have simply been living a rather self-centered life. We have not focused on what is most important about our individual lives and our collective lives. We have not grown. We have not matured. We never consider the most important qualities of being a human being. Being honest, speaking honestly, living honestly, trust, love, relationships. We don't consider and have conversations with one another about what is truly important. Family. Instead, what we have done is we have spoken a good game about ourselves, but we have only lived really one value, money and success, material success career success. And that focus being primary has led us down a very, very dark road. You know, I got this comment from a subscriber and it so inspired me and I'm going to read it. And I believe this subscriber is from Oklahoma, um, if I'm wrong, if you're seeing this video, could you let me know? What is she right? Damn, if this isn't the best sum of everything wrong with our society. This comment was underneath the last Mark Passio video that I posted, where he is talking about Satanism and parenting and how we raise our children and how so many have been manipulated into living this satanic life at the same time telling themselves that they're wonderful good decent people even Christians telling themselves they're Christian and yet they live a rather satanic lifestyle. They are cogs in the wheel of a very evil system. Many, well, due to their own, I guess, lack of moral courage, they never face their, the truth about their own self. They never ever do that work, that self-reflective work, so that they can grow and become more mature and, and become better human beings. Instead, they just keep doing the same old, same old, 
many have just well they have justified in their own mind God is going to come back and make everything right so I don't have to do anything I got a comment from somebody recently who said remember this is temporary this life is only temporary and before that it was about Christ Jesus remove yourself from this world put all of your um, heart and soul into Christ Jesus I can't remember exactly but it was all about not doing much of anything and remember this life is temporary so we just have to get through it and eventually we will be living in eternal bliss many have justified for their own self so that they can continue sinning they say things like well Jesus died on the cross for our sins but never do they talk about cleaning up their own sins and it's clear in the Bible Jesus says I will forgive you of your sin go but sin no more there is no need to think really hard about what Jesus was saying I will forgive you of your sin go and sin no more you don't get to keep sinning many will just say well we're all sinners okay alright is that the the start and end point no our job is to do the work necessary so that we understand why it is that we're sinning whatever particular sin or sins you are engaged in to understand that kind of behavior so that you don't repeat that behavior but it's very clear Jesus says sin no more so Jesus is saying you gotta work on yourself you have to work on yourself and it's very clear when Jesus says to that person who's calling out you know Jesus I always called out your name and yada 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 and Jesus just turns and says I never knew you I never knew you what does that mean if we're living a lie if we're living a pretense if we're living a life with a mask on out into the world if we've got this persona created for the world and go back into our home and maybe be real when we're around our dogs and pets or whatever but we're not real in relationship with one another how can we know one another if you lie then nobody can know you so Jesus right there when he's saying I never knew you it does not matter how many times you cry out it does not matter if you think that you are saved by Jesus Christ the only way Jesus will know you is if you speak honestly and live honestly in this world right here this world seems to be unimportant to an awful lot of Christians who uh, leave those comments about you know this fight is not against uh, flesh and blood but against principalities look you can't look to me to quote the Bible or anything but what does that mean are people just justifying in their own head that we're not supposed to be fighting against those who are evil those who are causing an awful lot of suffering I read a comment a while ago someone actually wrote we are the army of God 
and we stand ready whenever God calls. You haven't heard the call yet? Look, the spiritual road is painful. It's exceedingly difficult. It strips you of your ego, of your false pretense. It strips you of, of doing certain things in life that will benefit you but harm someone else. And it instills in you if you continue along that spiritual road, it instills in you a mind and a heart and a body that even if you wanted to lie, you'll have a visceral response to it and you can't do it. And it also instills in you this uh, care for those who are suffering. When you see injustice, there's something inside you that compels, compels you, compels you. It's like a force within you that is almost beyond your control. It is beyond your control. You've got to stand up and do what's right. And you can't contribute to this system. You can no longer contribute. I got a comment from someone that was very inspiring in reading his experience he was making a fabulous salary, very living a very comfortable life, and he had to give it up because he could no longer contribute. And I'm paraphrasing. He could no longer be a cog in the wheel of this evil system. That's what's that that is that's where you get that's the road that's narrow and people have asked me why are you always you know uh, criticizing Christians and I don't I, I, I criticize hypocrisy but Christians you gotta understand you were ninety percent ninety percent of our population until recently well it was seventy four percent a couple of years ago when I saw it, now it's 70%. So more and more are backing away from calling themselves Christians. But still, at 70%? My God! You could have had such a profound influence in this country if if you were genuine, if you didn't just call yourself a Christian and maybe go to church on Sundays and if you lived an honest life and tried to emulate that life of Jesus that you claim to love so much if, if you see this is my idea of a genuine Christian they wake up in the morning and they deliberately set about to try as hard as they can to emulate that life of Jesus. Yeah, of course you'll fall short, but then you get up the next day and you try and you keep trying and you get those muscles tighter and you get more in shape spiritually 
and you eventually get on that narrow road. Where sinning is something that you might engage in, but you will have that visceral response of, I've done something wrong and I cannot do it again. So you do it less and less. And as you live that honest life, and it's very hard to do in this American society because we're trapped in the country of the lie. Everybody is just lying, living a pretense. And when you are surrounded by people who lie and you tell the truth, you get attacked. It is very hard to do. But if you call yourself a Christian, then that is what you are obligated to do. So, at 90% of the population declaring themselves Christian, and what has manifested is just lie after lie after lie, something is amiss there. But even at 70% of the, of the population, you are a force. You could have been a force. You still can be a force. If you started to face yourself, if you got real about that Christianity, if you took it seriously, if you started to have honest conversation, communication with others, you could begin to instill trust again in our community. You cannot tell me that if we had even just a majority of the Christians who lived a genuine, serious Christian life, the family would not have broken down. Community would not have broken down. Trust would still be here. And I would love for all Christians to really begin to think about how they're living. And Forget about the label that you are putting on yourself. Think about trying to adopt a Christ-like mind and consciousness, heart and soul. If you continue just doing what you're doing, if you're still living this pretense, calling yourself a Christian, just sitting back waiting for God to come and right all the wrongs, waiting for Jesus to bring you up to heaven so that you can live eternal bliss while you're just doing nothing here on earth. So many leave comments saying, you're still of this world, Carol. Well, guess what? We're all of this world. Do you think that God that you speak of, you think he created your life to come on this earth and to do nothing, to not take seriously your life, to live it where no one knows you to contribute to the evil that is taking place to use that Bible to justify or to make yourself feel good about all of the suffering 
that's taking place by saying, well, it's written in the Bible. This was all prophesized. You can relax now, Carol, because it was written in the Bible. And what's lacking from those comments is a compassion for all of the suffering that is taking place on this, on this planet. They're just waiting to die so that they can go to live eternal bliss. Really? You've rendered life on this planet meaningless. And God clearly made a mistake. You know, because in your mind, well, God brought you here to, oh, sorry, well, it's only temporary. Yeah, just wait it out. It's going to be hard and long, but just wait, 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 do nothing. And when you die, then, then everything good will start. Jesus. All right. No, I'm sorry. You know, I get attacked by Christians because I don't have the beliefs that you have. I do not call myself anything anymore because labels are re they're so limiting and my God in the Bible did Jesus tell you to call yourself a Christian? No. In the Bible, very clear, so simple. And even if this one passage, which I frankly think is the most important, it's not even a passage, one line in the Bible, the most important line, that if Christians actually focused on that, my God, we could have created an entirely different world here. We could have manifested something something that could have been so unbelievable, wonderful. That one line, lying is an abomination. Lying is an abomination. Lying is an abomination. Right there, that Bible that so many Christians talk about, read, interpret, quote from, but never do I hear or see that lying is an abomination. Oh, I will see people leave comments, homosexuality is an abomination. Never lying is an abomination. Why is lying an abomination? Because lying is the root of evil. And if you lie, which includes living a pretense, you are on the side of evil. And you are not part of God's army. Damn, if this isn't the best sum of everything. Wrong with our society. And I have had to take a hard look at myself and my ways in the last few years. And it has been ugly and so regretful. And it has been pain but it has changed me. If we all don't look at ourselves and deal with our own darkness, we will never be able to help anyone or the children being raised in this cesspool. We have to do the hard work internally if we ever want to right this ship that is sinking fast. I tried to plant these seeds in my older ones, which I sadly failed which I sadly failed at with parenting. But with my younger ones, whom I have been given a second chance to lead by example, not with my words, but by my actions.
six years. And I can count the number of comments. Well, I can't actually count them, but just using that as a phrase, phrase so few comments where people have actually talked about they looking at themselves and they facing those parts of themselves that are ugly and evil because we all have that within us because if we were all just wonderful and good and decent this nightmare would never have manifested understand that a society is made up of the individual in the aggregate it is made up of that one family unit and then you put all of those family units together and voila you've got a society our families are very sick. Few, few grow up in homes with parents who are healthy, who are loving and caring, and who know how to raise a child and set them on a trajectory where when they become adults they are healthy human beings. And as a healthy human being, they are caring, compassionate, loving, not self centered. They're not riddled with all of their personal unresolved issues that they fling about and hurt other people with. So if we had a majority of people coming out of their childhoods, entering adult, in that condition, we would never have manifested this nightmare. But we have not looked at parenting. Very few people talk about parenting, and very few. In fact, after reading this comment, I tried to think of how many parents as friends of mine could actually take a look and admit I failed. I failed. I failed at raising my children. And the most important, most important thing or gift that a parent can give their children whether they're still children or adult children is to admit that to them and to say I'm sorry I failed I failed you and then begin a new relationship but instead, parents point the finger at their children because they can't face their own self because they're trapped in that low level of consciousness which is ego-driven, where people have to be right and where they feel that they can never be perceived as doing wrong. They need the approval as being just perfect. That's the persona that they carry out into the world. I am just perfect. I'm perfect. I'm perfect. And then they go back into their homes and close that door. We have lived in a society where when people begin to talk about their life experience, including their childhoods, we shut them up, we silence them, we call them victims. 
we've been socially engineered, beginning in the early 80s, to drop blame. Never blame anybody. That's bad. That's bad behavior. And yet, what do we hear our quote-unquote leaders? Oh, let's not play the blame game. But they blame everyone. Everyone but themselves. We live in a society where the majority never take responsibility for anything that they do that hurts another human being. And the same people will be attacking other people, claiming, well, they're just not taking responsibility for their own life. Parents, understand this. Understand, Jerry, you've got to be the mother that you were because of how you were raised. And then we have to understand that how we were raised, our parents got to be who they are because of how they were raised. And all of this stuff goes back generation upon generation. I mean, it just goes back and back and back until there is one person in a generation that breaks the cycle. And Jerry, you broke the cycle. You broke the cycle. You took a look at yourself and you had the courage. You had the courage to look at the ugly, at the regretful, and it was painful, and you had the courage to admit you failed. But you say that it changed you. It changes people when they take a look at their own self. But if you don't have the courage to take a look at your own self, you will be forever that person who contributes to this nightmare. You will never be a part of the solution. You will always be a part of the problem. And you will cause harm. Six years I have posted many videos on this subject. The importance of embracing full truth, which means the truth about ourselves, included with that truth that is happening to us collectively. You cannot call yourself a truther, which I, I don't understand those labeling uh, truther, truther community. Okay. But if you haven't faced yourself yet, you ain't about the truth. Sorry. The most important truth is the truth about yourself. The truth about how you have lived. The truth about your own contribution to this nightmare. The truth about Who you are. Who are you? The truth about whether or not you talk principles that you don't live. And the only way that one can come to a conclusion about that is by close examination of your own self. The beliefs that you have, it is critical, critical to question those beliefs. To understand why you have them. Did you deliberately choose your belief? Or was it handed to you 
by those adults who had influence over you as a child and you adopted them as children do they're looking up to the adults as if they're gods and adults well they're right so you adopt their beliefs and you go on into your adult lives and many never ever question the beliefs that they have they they think that the belief that they have is their belief like it's their choosing but when you challenge not even intentionally but unintentionally you may say something that challenges that belief and when they come back and attack you you know that they have done no work on themselves and that the belief that they have is just something that they adopted it's not really strong within themselves but they don't want they don't want that coming into their consciousness so they attack you because they never want to be challenged again but all of our indoctrination we've got baby boomers who are still indoctrinated and without doing the work necessary to weed out all of that indoctrination they know they do not have a mind that they control their thinking processes is, is just from all of the ways in which that they have been indoctrinated they can't think for themselves and beliefs are insidious they insidiously attach to our brains to our minds as an example a belief I had my entire life up until I don't know 2000 really well I'll say 2012 when I left Great Barrington Massachusetts which is a small town in New England and that town liberal progressive Democrat the liberal progressive Democrats while the names and faces changed that social network of mine never changed it never changed so the beliefs of the liberal progressive Democrats while I may have been a little bit um, kind of not so a go along to get along and well that put me in a position of continually having a lot of conflict in my life one belief I had abortion did I do any research on abortion no how did I get this belief that women who abort their babies their babies never feel any harm and I had a belief that this was just a clinical procedure and it was nothing and those who were against abortion were religious fanatics and therefore I was immediately closed to even having a conversation with somebody about abortion and the door would be shut the minute they brought religion into it and when I would hear from those advocates that were against abortion there were times that I actually said to them okay well a woman has a child 
She's absolutely not ready to be a parent. She screws it up. The child is traumatized. They have no money. Are you going to care for that child then? And I didn't get an answer. So it wasn't just, you know, the fetus in the womb that I cared about. It was the child afterwards that I cared more about. But this belief, it's just a, a medical procedure. Nobody gets harmed. What's all the fuss about? How did I get that belief? I adopted it. It was the belief that those within my social network, we all believe the same thing. I don't know anyone who did any research to, to, uh, to see if their belief was actually correct. That didn't matter. Because when you are surrounded by a lot of people and you all have that same belief, you're supporting one another's belief. No matter how wrong it is, you will see that it's right because you have so much support for it. And that goes with every belief. Every and any belief. So when we're hanging out with the same people and we don't challenge ourselves by engaging in lengthy conversation with those who believe differently, when we don't step outside that social circle and examine it when we don't do the research. We could be believing something that causes an awful lot of harm. And when I had to face that I carried that belief. I went to protests on Washington, D.C. In Washington, D.C., supporting abortion. Yeah, it's painful. And then we have our own personal issues that also get involved. So, I was brought up constantly being told I was the stupid one. But my social network, it was filled with people who were highly educated. I never considered myself to be smart. So what they were telling me, my friends, my colleagues, my associates, what they were telling me, because I believed, even just if it's on a subconscious level, I believed they were smart, I was stupid, so therefore they're right. And that made the belief more cemented in my brain. But it also uh, manifested a person who didn't ask them. I didn't challenge that belief. They were smart. If they had that belief, they were right. So I just adopted it. Did I do any research? No. I was handed a belief through conversation and I carried it for decades. until I examined it. Until I came across YouTube videos years ago where it was clear that abortion is not just this uh, painless medical procedure. That process is necessary for every belief we have.
in order to get to a place where we become a human being who has deliberately chosen deliberately chosen their values their belief system because without that deliberate choosing that human being is very fragile and weak they don't really have a strong moral and spiritual core because they don't understand themselves they don't understand their beliefs but when you do all of that work examining your own thought process and beliefs and asking yourself am I living am I living the principles that I claim I have that is the process that makes you a stronger human being and it will inevitably lead you to that place of understanding that you did a lot of jive talking baby but it wasn't real oh you talked about how much you cared and how compassionate you were and but it wasn't real because you didn't do all of this work necessary to get out all of the mishigas in that brain to clean it up and then to choose deliberately how you will live the values you have the belief system that you have and then you march on it's at that point that you become someone where you cannot not act when you see injustice it is that generative care that Mark Passio talks about I have no one in my life that inspires me I live now a life where I can't talk about these things because I'm surrounded by people who wouldn't even understand what I was talking about. I've had a lot of people in my life who claimed that they wanted to do this work and guess what? Because they couldn't face themselves. They turned vicious. The damage that is done from that shadow, from the darkness that Jerry is talking about. I hope I'm pronouncing the name right. Um, that darkness will come out. That shadow side will come out. That part of yourself that you deny you will not take a look at, oh, it comes out. And it can come out in a way where the harm done is very hard then to face yourself there is not one person on the planet that doesn't have that ugly mean 
uh, side of them. There's not one person on the planet that does not have within them that dark side that causes an awful lot of shame and embarrassment when we admit it. But it's got to be done because it's the only way that you can ever get to know yourself to know who you really are and it is the only way that you can ever have deep meaningful relationships so I posted a video on the loneliness that is taking place in our society where so many people now have no one in their life, no one to turn to, no one where they can have conversation that is meaningful. It is our job to heal, heal what is taking place. We've got to heal it. So for the amount of time that we have left, as far as I'm concerned, this needs to be our focus. What we are doing in our own life, how we are living, how we are behaving, how we are treating one another, to root out the presumptions that come to mind, and it comes to mind telling yourself that it's a fact, and then you just throw it down in the comment section, and you've lied. Because so often presumptions are wrong about people. So here we are in the cyber world with all of these people making all of these presumptions about people they have never met. Never met. They don't have evidence to back up their claims that they make. And when you begin this type of work, this self-reflection, when we really examine our thought process and, and we question, okay, I am saying this about so-and-so, but I don't even know them, so we've got to stop and question what I'm thinking about them. Could it, is it really true? Is it really true? And then ask yourself, well, how do you know that it's true? Then ask yourself, do you know them well enough to have come to that conclusion? And then tell yourself, well, I don't, I've never even met them. Here we are in the cyber world. I don't know them. I'm not in their life. But I have made this judgment, and I think that I'm right, so I'm going to throw it out. When we have an awareness and that is key. Increase your self-awareness so that you are self-aware everywhere you go. You are aware of how others are behaving. You are aware of what they are saying. You are aware of their facial expressions, their body language, which is taking in full communication. And you are aware of your reactions to it, your responses to it, your own body, your own body language. You're aware of what you were thinking. And you are aware, are aware of the presumptions that you are making. And so you can pull yourself back and say, wait, I don't know this person. I can't, you know, hey, jumping to a conclusion much? Okay. So you step back and it clears up what's going through your head and you start to listen more closely and listening have you ever thought about how you listen because listening truly is an art you listen with awareness 
you listen and if you have the self-awareness then you are able to catch the oh I'm listening with my own filter I'm listening through my own experience I'm not listening to the person who's really talking I am imposing my experience upon them and oh they triggered me and those filters started in my brain so I'm missing a lot of what they are saying as I filter out hearing what I'm hearing for whatever reason and this is a lifetime job this growth stuff it never stops you just keep trying to be better at those things that are most important in life now many people might have judged me in what I'm saying oh Carol thinks that she's of such high consciousness oh and she's the best listener oh and she doesn't sin and yeah no I am not saying that I am saying I have done enough work to be at a higher place do I consider it to be a higher a real high place no I got myself to a place of recognizing wow okay there are different levels of consciousness and this is the work necessary to do it I got myself to a place that is higher than where I was but it ain't that high I just now have an awareness that allows me to be honest about where I am at you know I wear my cheap flip-flops and I don't pretend that I'm wearing sandals of some spiritual master or Jesus I don't regard myself as being all healed and healthy. Are you kidding? From where I came from? <laughs> well, that would have been a miracle to get there. No, I still have my issues. I still have, um, there's an awful lot going on in my life. I work every single day to bring my best self to every interaction that I have. Um, and you know what? Sometimes that ain't that great. But I'm honest enough to say I absolutely, I don't slack off. And I don't claim to be anything but what I am. Because of the work that I've done, I have changed. I have seen people leaving comments, the only way you can change is through Jesus Christ. No, no, that's, that, is, that is a false belief. That is not true. I have encountered people who claim that no one can change. Well, they've never did. They never tried to change themselves. So they're just looking at everybody as if everybody is there. But everybody's just like them. That is not true. I've also encountered an awful lot of people who who live such incredibly 
false lives. A lot in AA. It is a program of rigorous honesty. It is a program in which people are supposed to be working on themselves to better themselves and yada yada yada. And they don't. And it's gotten worse. Because now we're such a self-centered the individuals in our society are just all about themselves and everybody is supporting one another in that way of living. You know, when I came into AA in 1980, oh my God, people were calling people out on, you know, things that they were doing. By 2005, going to AA in Great Barrington, I couldn't believe, I couldn't believe what was happening where people who were drinking would get up to qualify. You know, they would tell their story. They, if you don't know AA, um, you, in speaker meetings, you pick somebody to speak, tell their story, their um, experience, strength, and hope. And I walked into a meeting, and there was a guy who I knew was drinking, Guess what? He was my sponsee, and I let him go because he was drinking. And he was sitting there, qualifying, sharing his experience, strength, and hope with everybody, and claiming he had seven months of sobriety. And I'm looking around the room. I had spoken to my sponsor about it. She was sitting in the room. And no one was saying anything. In, in New York City, if that occurred, in the 80s, oh my god, people would have like ripped him from his chair. No. And after the meeting, I spoke to my sponsor and she looked at me and she said, Well, alcoholics lie. Really? Okay. Well, everybody lies. That's not um, a, uh, <laughs> that, that's not just within alcoholics and drug addicts. Everybody is lying in this country. And alcoholics lie, so just accept it. So much was going on in AA that that was just like, what the hell happened here? You know, somebody that I was going to meetings with never was really working the program, told me, I don't want to grow. I don't want to grow. Okay. Well, you begin to realize what that means in the Bible when they're talking about that narrow road. and not too many people are on it. And that's another thing, Christians who believe they're going to heaven <laughs> to live eternal bliss and all they have to do is just get through this life. But it's clear in the Bible, it's a narrow road. Jesus says, hey, I never knew you Sorry, don't care how many times you called out my name. You lived a life where I couldn't see who you were because of your pretense and your lies and your persona and your mask and your hypocrisy. And you lived a life that was Satan's life, not mine. So, of course, Jesus is going to be saying that left and right. He's going to get really tired of saying, hey, man, uh, sorry, didn't know you. Couldn't figure out who you were. I saw all the, the contradictions and, and, yeah, you were talking a good game, but you weren't living it, man, so sorry. When what you say and what you do matches, that's when people know who you are. 
So, how is it that, oh, God, man, so many Christians, they all believe in they're going to heaven. All, every one of them, going to heaven, going to heaven, going to heaven. But when do you begin to think, okay, it's a narrow road. Why do I think I'm going? What's so special about me that I'm going? It's a narrow road. How come, you know, and I've had many, many Christians in my life. How come nobody talks about Jesus saying, I never knew you? And they wondering, will Jesus know me? Will Jesus know me? Or is he going to look at me and say, I never knew you? You don't hear much talk about all of that. Lying is an abomination. I never knew you. Go. I'll forgive you of your sin, but sin no more. It's a narrow road. But you see, wow, many comments. How you have to be saved by Jesus. Many quotes from the Bible, but never those. When you even begin to ask yourself those questions. Will Jesus know me? Am I on the narrow road? Those questions will put you on that trajectory that leads to the narrow road. Those are the questions that will change you if you stay with it. I am literally hanging on to life. Exhausted. And it's not just from all of the chemicals and the frequencies and the chemtrails and yada, yada, yada. It's not from all of the madness. And hey, I grew up in madness, okay? I'm hardwired for the insanity that is taking place. What gets me is the lack of people within this community and I guess maybe I had expectations of people who were quote unquote awake which is such a misnomer because it is an, an awakening that goes on forever we don't just go from sleep to awake but And I'm sorry, I literally just forgot. It just went out of my head what I was. Oh, I don't have people like this in my life, in my life, to be lifted up. I don't have people in my life on the same page who are taking seriously their life, taking seriously their spirituality, taking seriously growing and maturing. I have no one. So you get very depleted. And these are the comments that always I go, wow, yes, yes. Please, please. Just like Jerry says here, if we want to right this ship and it is sinking really fast, I'm not saying that you engaging in this work, you're going to keep that ship from sinking. I'm saying that it is vital 
for you to engage in that work, not just to save the sinking ship, but it is vital for your own life. It is vital if you are seriously on a spiritual road. And it's vital for you to engage in this work so that you do become a better human being and you don't harm and betray and lie to and whatever issue that you have to your friends and your family and your loved ones and everyone. It is vital because you want to be an instrument of establishing trust within your community, within the community here. And you cannot get there as that instrument without engaging in this process. You cannot become a better human being without admitting all of those character defects and those failings and the ugly side. And my God, you will never, ever be a good parent if you cannot look back and examine how you raised your children. And you cannot claim that you love your children, regardless of age, if you cannot take responsibility each and every time you do something wrong, you harm them. And when you do take responsibility and admit to them you have the opportunity to have an extraordinary relationship with your children. Instead, what do we see? We have accepted dysfunction, accepted it. No, we don't try to heal it. We just accept it. And we go on through our lives, bitching and complaining. Oh, I gotta go to my family's for the holidays. I gotta see my mother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you never heal. And a lot of the problem is when you have people who have never taken a look at themselves, they are all about their ego. And so if you bring to them, if you call them out on something, if you hold them responsible or accountable for something, Wow. No, they're not going to hear that. They may first defend themselves and claim that you're crazy and it didn't take place or they may make light of what they have done and then they look at you as if you're the problem. They may attack you. If people could just understand if parents, the children of parents, they could understand that we all acquire all of these character defects, these issues that we have that do cause harm in our society. We got them from our childhoods. Your parents, hey adult children, and adult children and I'm not using that, you know, they're immature. I'm just saying as opposed to, you know, a real uh, child, you know, 10, 11. I'm talking about adults. And I can't think of any that didn't have an awful lot of resentment and hurt within them. It would come out. And one of the main things that I heard 
from an awful lot of my friends was their parents never listened to them. Their parents refused to take responsibility. So that left inside them the hurt of the betrayal, which then meant that that relationship, they could never have a real close relationship. They would go through their lives pretending They would say that they love one another. But you can't get to love without truth. They go hand in hand. So if you're living with all of this unresolved crap and you go see, you know, mommy or daddy or your aunt or uncle, grandparents, whatever, but you've got all of this unresolved crap, but you can't find anybody that you have um, issues with, they won't engage in any kind of conversation that could be healing. You go through your life with all of that unresolved crap. Most people don't even want to engage in conversation to heal anything. So they remain the same and that is what makes them children immature adults. Now you can do that work. The work to grow and mature without that person who refuses to engage in any kind of resolution. You can continue to do that work. It makes it an awful lot easier and less painful if you can do it with with those that have hurt you or you've hurt them or whatever but what most people they don't parents look you got to be who you are because you learned it from your own parents and a lot of people have a tremendous amount of anger towards their parents not recognizing that, well, I can't say that this is true for every parent because there are an awful lot of evil parents, but those who aren't in that category, they're just doing the same old, same old that they were taught as children, that grow up to be angry at their parents, not recognizing their parents, they were doing what they learned as children from their parents. And until we come together with that realize, realization that your parents didn't do this deliberately, you don't set out, you don't, you don't grow up in a healthy home with loving, caring, compassionate, and uh, parents who instilled real moral character, you don't become an adult who is healthy and sit down one day and say to yourself, you know what, I'm going to have kids, but I'm not going to raise them the way I was raised by my parents. I'm not going to give them the love and the care, the understanding. I'm not going to give them what children need. I'm going to make a decision to fuck them up. No. There's no one who makes a deliberate decision to abuse and neglect their children. To shame their children. This is learned behavior, but it can be unlearned. So for those who are angry at their parents, try to imagine what their childhood was like. And then try to imagine what your grandparents' childhood was like. 
you're raised in a dysfunctional home because your parents were raised in a dysfunctional home. Now maybe you can skirt through life relatively comfortable never having to take a look at yourself. And unfortunately that's how most people do it. But if you haven't done that please don't claim that you're about truth and don't claim that you are spiritual <laughs> you can't claim anything because if you haven't done that work you don't even know who you are oh yes your brain is telling you I know who I am no you don't no you don't and for those who do believe in a God and God created you my God <laughs> it is the absolute most horrible portrayal of the God that you believe in that you claim has created your life and you've never even taken a look at your life you've never examined yourself you've taken on all of those influences from the adults in your childhood the beliefs their value, value system and you've grown up to be an adult without self-examination without questioning your own self, your own beliefs, values, everything questioning self-reflective work that's really painful you cannot know who you are and if God created you it is absolutely 100 percent your responsibility to undo all of that dysfunction and damage that was done to you as children and to become the authentic individual that God created if you don't do that you betray the God you claim to love and claim to believe in. So, yeah, I started with thinking I was going to be uh, doing this, but that will have to wait until tomorrow. Since this comment came in a couple of days ago, I've had it on my mind. And I failed as a parent. So many parents fail but they just don't have the courage within themselves to admit it. And by not admitting it, they never change. And they continue to hurt their children until the day they die. So I just want to say, and I'm sorry if this has embarrassed you, Jerry, I, that's not my intent. Perhaps I should have blackened out your name. but you are someone I really respect and I could not not use you as an example clearly you are on the narrow road clearly you are taking life seriously and it's very hard to do when most around you render it utterly meaningless meaningless those who say it's temporary meaningless those who lie meaningless
So that's all I have to say. And I am sorry for going on so long. We have an awful lot within this community here. Far too many who will never ever be part of the solution because they are not taking a look at their own self. And I think a lot of people think that they're better than the sleepers than those who are choosing willful ignorance. Well, first of all, life is not a game of, hey, I'm better than or worse than or whatever. I get frustrated with people who choose willful ignorance. And I get angry at those who lie. And my anger can be intense. And it can, it, that's the ugly side of me that comes out, and I hate it. But I can't do lies anymore. But those who think that they're better because they have some knowledge of what is taking place, what are you doing with that knowledge? If you're not doing anything with the knowledge, you're no better than those who are willfully ignorant. Knowledge is power. When you do something with it. So, everything comes down to your choice. You can choose not to grow, not to mature. You can choose to just live your life comfortably. You can choose to continue to justify in your own mind how you are living your life. You can choose to remain in that self-deception. Or you can begin to engage in a conversation with yourself and begin to look in the mirror many people are so frightened of exposing what is in all of us it may manifest differently but we all have a dark side many people don't have the courage to leave a comment like this. But when you begin to really examine yourself and get that self-awareness of your own issues, it's a powerful, mind-blowing experience when you finally get to a point where you're going, holy shit, okay, I'm at this kind of new, uh, I don't know, perception or level of consciousness or whatever, but I'm now recognizing that, oh, this country is filled with people who are really screwed up, filled with issues. And you begin to, <laughs> that perfect self, the defense of your own ego, that goes in the garbage. You really see that all of us um, have our failings. So that perfectionism, the need for approval from people, you need approval from people who are messed up, I had, for such a long time, this was years ago, I had imagined when I was living in Great Barrington that people would come together. There was a time when I was thinking, okay, what's the, what, is, what is the most important 
issue that we face. Is it the geoengineering? Is it is it uh, Agenda 2030? Oh, God, no. Uh, actually, if it, well, if they can actually control our minds with microwave frequencies, my God, that's it. That's it. And then one day I'm walking down the street, Main Street, Great Barrington, and I, it was like my mind was seeing not people. I was seeing issues banging into one another. Everybody with their unresolved issues just, you know, hanging out on the street. No one knowing who they were. And they're all pretending that they're just swell. And I thought, my God, that is the most important. This is the most important issue that we face. The individual. The un resolved, unexamined individual. Because if they don't examine themselves, they can never change and manifest anything differently. They will continue to be robots doing the exact same thing over and over and over again. That is the most important issue that we face. That is the most dangerous thing that we face. The individual who refuses to face themselves in the mirror and clean up their unresolved stuff from their childhood so that they can mature and become responsible adults. And I believe that is when Jesus will say, okay, now I know you. 